lads, ladies, gents, ladettes, whoever, whatever, welcome back to another video. There are plenty of underappreciated movies that never really get the love they deserve, and the same can be said about some games. Typically, you wouldn't say this about a tie-in game, but both 2005's Robots movie and its subsequent tie-in game are hidden gems. Although, in saying that, it's a bit weird to say a movie's a hidden gem when it made over $200 million at the box office. But since I can't watch it on any streaming service here in Australia, and every time I bring it up with friends when we're talking about animated movies, I'm usually met with a look of confusion. As you would expect, the tie-in game follows the plot of the movie. However, unlike most tie-in games, it wasn't afraid to change up the flow of the story in order to make the character introductions feel more natural for a game. Developed by Eurocom, who you might know for some of the following classics, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Chaos Bleeds, and James Bond 007 Nightfire. They weren't always known for pumping out gold, but when they were on, Eurocom did make some brilliant games. With the plot basically following the same outline as the movie, you'll meet an interesting cast of characters and explore the world of Rivet Town on your quest as Rodney Copperbottom to meet with the legendary Big Weld to show off his invention, which honestly was basically a sentient being. Is Rodney a god? Upon beginning the game, you start out as a very young Rodney, getting taught the game's basic controls in its tutorial. Now normally, I don't like to talk about tutorials because who the hell cares, but this little intro sequence is just mwah, perfection. It sets everything up I can expect throughout the game when it comes to the little details. You can interact with every NPC, and there's surprisingly a lot of them, especially for a PS2 game. It's way more than I could have expected, all with voice lines that fit them. There isn't a ton of variety here when it comes to those voice lines, and sure you get the typical they must be twins because they reuse the same handful of models over and over, but going back to play games of this era and seeing that Robots is one of the few games that has this level of interactivity to it makes it stand out above the rest. Visually, the game is basically flawless in my eyes as everything looks and feels as if it's part of a lifted world. From the street level where everyone is just getting by, to the big city where the robots are all shiny and upgraded. Upgrades people, upgrades! The game's OST also does a great job of representing everything going on around you. Even though I wouldn't say it's necessarily something you're going to go out of your way to listen to, it does a really good job of servicing the game more so than being a focus, which is something I've mentioned in the past. The voice acting is also really solid across the board, even if Rodney's obligatory two lines do come off a little bit lame even for a tying game. Thankfully, he doesn't say them too often so they're not going to drive you too crazy, but you will hear them time and time again. You will notice this game has some pretty big similarities between itself and the Ratchet and Clank series, and I understand thematically there is only so much you can do with robots when it comes to currency, but Nuts and Bolts is a little bit on the nose. To get around this, being a straight ripoff though, they do name it Scrap. Good save guys. This isn't the only place you'll notice some of these elements between the two games being similar. Though I wouldn't say it's done in a way where they felt like they were trying to steal ideas from Ratchet and Clank, but they did do something that I would consider more adjacent to. You add that with what was popular at the time when it came to the average game in terms of its core design, and the gameplay ended up being, drum roll please, a third person action platformer. Like in recent times with Battle Royale games, the PS2 era was especially flooded with this style of gameplay. So in order to stand out, you had to do something different or at least do it a little bit better than most. And in my opinion, I would say Robots does a little bit of both, with there only really being one major issue in my book, but we'll get to that in a little bit. The game's movement is pretty damn fluid. However, I would say it doesn't really give you the sense of momentum of something like a Ratchet & Clank or Jack & Daxter. We have access to a double jump, ledge grab, zip line, slide, and even a glide. The game's movement options are well utilized throughout, and that's thanks to its use of more vertical level design rather than just flat planes. Though in saying this, the ledge grab can definitely be a little bit finicky at points, so prepare to get a little bit frustrated. It makes the general exploration be really enjoyable, especially since the game's basically broken up into two core sections, with one of those, as you would figure, the exploration, and the other being the combat. Both will have platforming throughout them, but the combat sections are where you'll notice that Ratchet & Clank comparison I mentioned earlier. However, for both your sanity and mine, I'm going to try my best to stop comparing the two, because they are their own games. Having access to several different weapons, Rodney doesn't have a lack of options when it comes to dealing with his enemies. With his main rotation consisting of the scrap launcher and his trusty wrench. Mother f the Blue Rod Dog will also gain access to the Scrap Launcher Mega Shot, which is an upgrade that allows him to do more damage and also a charge shot, or he could have the Scrap Launcher Homer Shot, which homes in, the Spray Shot, which is a shotgun, and the Rico Shot, allowing bullets to bounce off walls. You can only have one of these upgrades at a time, but you can swap them at the game store at any point. However, it is for a fee. And this is where Robots does something really damn interesting, because the scrap that you pick up through the game is not only your ammo, but it's also your money. So you have to decide between spending the money or using your weapon that might make the fights easier. It's a mechanic I would have loved to have seen in a survival horror game more so than a 2005 action platformer, and it gives the game depth in a way that I 
don't think it needs it, but hey, it's really cool that it's here. It's a nice way to get the player to interact with all the different mechanics instead of just relying on one or two. Add this with the incredible enemy variety that's on display basically from the get-go, with each of them having more ideal ways of being dealt with than others, and it just makes this game's combat flow and feel great. The combat, even though it is simple, never feels like an afterthought, and they also made sure it never felt like it dominated in terms of the gameplay. You'll find yourself solving some pretty simple puzzles throughout the middle of these sections. These puzzles will make use of the other tools that Rodney has at his disposal, like his magnet gun that can be used to move boxes around to reach areas he previously couldn't, and his little wonder bot that can fly to areas that he just can't reach. I won't pretend like it's the deepest gameplay mechanics for these puzzles, and I would have enjoyed a little bit more challenge more so than doing a combination of entering first person mode to shoot a target, then doing a butt slam on a button to either activate something, or to use it as a trampoline. But I will say there is enough variety that you're not going to get too bored with it. If the game was any longer, it would be an issue, but thanks to its shorter runtime of roughly 6 to 8 hours, it doesn't really overstay its welcome. Which is great, because the major issue that this game has that I mentioned earlier is this game's camera. It is painful to deal with in certain sections, and even though it's functional 99% of the time, it does feel like it's too zoomed in for its own good. It also feels a little bit sluggish when I need it to move, almost as if the game takes a tiny bit of time before it allows the camera to move after I've moved the stick. Honestly, at no point is it more annoying than the transport pod sections. As you're zooming in these transport pods, you'll notice if you hit another pod, you take damage, so you will think to yourself, maybe I should avoid these. So you do, only to end up getting hit from behind over and over again and not in the fun way. Those balls are gonna be slapping together. What did he say? I'm not sorry, but it is definitely a source of frustration to be getting hit from things off screen that you can't see. If the camera was just a little more zoomed out, I think it'd be a lot better. Beyond the camera and any other minor issues I've mentioned, Robots itself is honestly a really fun game. It's not perfect and it's not trying to be. In the world of overpriced, overhyped and underdelivered games that we get these days, being able to go back and play a game that knows exactly what it is and does it well is just really refreshing. There are better third person action platformers out there, but this game never claimed to be the best. It's better than average, and if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. Also, watch the movie, because it's great. So with that, lads, ladies, gents, ladies, whoever, whatever, it brings us to the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed this look back at Robots. If you've seen the movie, or if you've played the game, let me know in the comment section below, and uh, tell me how good it is, because it's great, and I love it. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button. If you want to go that extra step, hit that subscribe button. If you want to go that extra mile, you can support me on Kofi from just a dollar a month, like these lovely people here. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe out there. Bye.